This instructional video will show you how to mount the KBMS 35 frameless part set to the demonstration unit. It should be understood that the magnets located on the rotor assembly are fully charged and will have a very strong attractive force. Keep all tools and parts away from the rotor during assembly. Be sure to use the jack screw when mounting and removing the rotor assembly. The KBMS consists of two parts, the stator, which is the electromagnetic portion of the motor, and the rotor, which is the permanent magnet portion of the motor. The stator is held in place on the demo unit by the adapter and the clamping ring. Since there are several rotors in the demo, an adapter will be used for each. The rotor will be mounted securely to the demo by the adapter and the clamp. The jack screw is supplied and provides a slow and controlled method of sliding the rotor into place. A toolkit is provided with an inventory list. In the kit are tools, various size bolts, and mounting hardware and a locking pin to hold the rotor in place during assembly. To mount the stator, we first mount the stator adapter to the demo unit. To mount the adapter, four quarter 20 by three quarter inch or M6 by 25 millimeter bolts will be used and a T-handle Allen wrench to tighten them. On the adapter is an alignment hole and this hole should be mounted at the two o'clock position, Greenwich Mean Time and it should be aligned to the shaft alignment hole and locked together using the locking pin. The adapter at the two o'clock position, start the four bolts into place. Snug the bolts down using the T-handle Allen wrench. Tighten the bolts finger tight. Do not over tighten the bolts. Insert the locking pin and rotate the shaft until the pin falls into place. This helps when mounting the rotor assembly. The stator for the KBMS 35 is rather long and care needs to be taken when inserting it onto the adapter. If it starts at an angle, the stator will bind and it will be very hard to remove. It should slide on easily with very little force. If it does not start well, realign it and begin again. It should bottom out on the adapter. Slide the lock ring over the stator. 3 quarter 20 by 2 and a half inch bolts or M6 by 65 millimeter bolts will hold the lock ring in place. Remember, only finger tighten the bolts when using the T-handle Allen wrench. Coming from the motor are three sets of wires, three motor power phases, Hall effect sensors, and the motor thermostat. And these should be mounted at the bottom of the demo. Since the rotor is long with respect to its diameter, it is important to ensure the alignment of the rotor onto the adapter. If it does not start with ease, try realigning it. At no time should the rotor be forced onto the adapter. It should slide down easily and smoothly. To mount the rotor on the shaft adapter, four bolts, either quarter 20 by 1.75 inch or M6 by 50 millimeter, will be used to secure the adapter to the demo shaft using the four holes that create the corners of a square. Next, mount the rotor clamp. For this, use four bolts, either quarter 20 by 0.75 inch or M6 by 20 millimeters. As with other bolts, do not over tighten. This assembly is now ready for the jack screw. Thread the jack screw into the rotor adapter. It should be screwed all the way down and then backed off approximately one and a half inches or four centimeters. Adding the rotor assembly onto the shaft, it is important to keep inward pressure on the rotor. This will prevent a gap from forming between the jack screw and the end of the shaft. At first, the screw will turn easy because there is very little attractive forces between the rotor and the stator laminations. Take the rotor until the bolt holes align with the shaft holes. The bolts will use the holes that make a cross pattern. Use four quarter 20 by 1.75 inch or M6 by 50 millimeter bolts. Do not over tighten the bolts. Remove the locking pin and the motor should rotate freely. The mounting of the motor is complete. For more information, please visit us at www.comorgan.com.